Okay, I'm good. Excellent. Sorry about that. Right. I think I, okay. I think we are approaching lift off. Yes. Yes, I have one question. That is where, uh, where we are in the overall story arc because I lost track a little yes. bit. Somewhere there, between Act Two and Three. Yes, there are four acts. Mm -hmm. And as far as I am concerned, you have completed Act Two. But there are more chapters than acts, usually. And you have just completed Chapter Three. So I am not sure if all this structure is very necessary, but all a chapter means is that it's a signal for everybody to do something about their dark fates. So, um, yeah, uh, that that specific scene we where we yes. have to play correct. Yeah. But I also would like everybody to remember that you are free to bring in aspects of your dark fate um, at any right. time, and that you have considerable creative power to do this. That you should, mm -hmm. you can, and should add characters mm -hmm. or events or visual effects or behaviors for your character, you can and should bring those things in anytime you want. That is okay. And frankly, if you don't, then we are not playing the Mountain Witch. So I do. I yes, can uh, I assure you that much. I was I just thinking about the pacing. I do. I understand. That's where we are in the pacing. So, we are, mm -hmm. we are, uh, we have completed two acts out of four. Okay. Um, so then let's uh, let's begin. Uh, the last scene um, concerned the characters uh, have created very effectively created a winter camp, and were yeah. able to pass a very comfortable night. Uh, even though everybody did and something creepy at the end of it for for everyone to to think about but we have come to the point where we are beginning our our new phase our new chapter and I am ready to go um, but I also want to review a little bit it has been two weeks so uh, we recall that we have one fairly young Ronin. Uh, we have um, a somewhat older one with a flute. Um, and I am wanted to remember a little more about Uno Dono and what he looked like. Max, can you remind us a little bit? Uh, let me look from my, uh, clothing, good clothing, traditional right. and casual wear, okay. Japanese male with short, dark hair. Okay. Uh, is what I have written. Okay. Now, another consideration is that, um, all of you need <clears throat> to know what trust you have placed in the other characters. And Nathan, are you the one who does not have his sheet? Yes. Is that you? Yes. yes. Okay. So let's, yes, yes. as somebody suggested, let's reverse engineer. So according okay. to your sheets, how much a trust has... Um, uh, Kisaragi. How much trust has Kisaragi placed in Tagachi? Uh, three. Okay. Do you, you might need to write that down. I do. Nathan, yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah. Uh, how much trust has Kisaragi placed in Unodono? Uh, three. Three. How much trust has Kisaragi placed in um, Utasama. Two. Two. Okay. So then we have to go backwards the other direction. Uh, those are the points that each of you has to spend 
regarding Kisaragi. Am I being clear on that? Those are the points that, that each of you, except for Nathan, has to spend regarding him. Now he needs to know how much points he has to spend regarding each of you. So how many points um, has Unadono placed in Kisaragi? Three. Three. How many points has Tagachi placed in Kisaragi? Three. Three. And how much has Una, has um, Itosama, sorry, placed in? Three. Three. Okay. So, Nathan, those are the points that you have to spend <clears throat> regarding each of those characters for this chapter. So, okay. Perfect. Thanks. Can, right. And remember, that is not per conflict. That's for the whole chapter. Right. So, now, uh, we have to uh, also consider wounds. As I recall, uh, did Kisaragi take a permanent wound? You did. Okay, so you have one permanent yeah. wound. And yeah. what, about, what about anyone else? Does anyone else have a permanent wound they are carrying? I don't... It Itosama has a permanent wound. Okay. I have no permanent wounds. Okay, points. excellent. So those are the, at the moment of this chapter, those are the only wounds that we are talking about. And just for purposes of, uh, of the narrative, let's remember what those are. If I remember correctly, Kisaragi has a badly injured leg. Is that correct? No, it was a Oh, his spine, his back spine. is hurt. Okay. Yeah. So he's yeah. he's actually quite <laughs> injured from that fall. And yeah. then uh, Itosama, what was the injury? I don't think I stated it. I thought about it and I decided she would have, she had a fall too, not that deep, but she has damaged her knee. Okay. So Good it enough. will influence right. uh, her ability for footwork. Right. Okay. Excellent. So uh, the two of you are more, you are not slashed, but you are badly uh, battered. So uh, now we can consider uh, your circumstances, more traveling up through the very snowy paths and roads. So they are not very convenient and your path is much slower than it was before. So it, it you are you do not make a lot of distance, um, but on the other hand, there is no real barrier. There are no cliffs that you have to climb. There are no rocks you have to, you know, to to. It is not like mountain climbing. It is more like just a difficult mountain path. And you will come to the crater that defines most of the top of Mount Fuji. It is a volcano, you know. And um, although it is not considered an active volcano, it is not dead either. And even to this day, Mount Fuji is a dormant volcano. So that is uh, an, a, a comforting thought that you may take with you. And uh, the effect here is that although it is snowy, the, the crater itself has less snow in it than you might expect. In other words, it is not like a bowl full of snow. It is still mostly rocks and scrubby uh, expanses of, of pl very tough little plants. And it's not one great big smooth bowl like in a movie either. There are lots of levels and lots of um, uh, broken ground. And from here, you can see the fortress of the mountain witch. It is not right in the center. It is up against the side of the crater so that part of it is built into the vertical surface of the wall of the crater. 
and then some of it is more flat and defined by a series of fortress walls. Um, there seems to be a system of roads and paths and stairs and things like that, but it is all the way, it is across the crater from you, not straight across, but it's more far than it is near, so you do not really get a great look at all of its details. But all of you have enough military training to recognize what kind of fortress it is, and it's not too exotic looking. It's a little bit crazy to imagine somebody building such a thing up here, but that's magic for you. So Those witches... <laughs> do, do I see anything special because of your eyes, of my yes. eyesight? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, you can see that there are um, what to your eyes at this distance appear to be people who, although there are not very many, there are uh, guards who walk along the edges of the fortress walls or are doing some kind of work or activity near the bottom of the fortress. And you can also see that there are, uh, uh, it, it would look like smoke perhaps, but it is pure white. So from certain points in the fortress, blowing almost horizontally in the wind, are streams of some kind of white mist that are being produced. So um, you can also see with your eyes that there are multiple possible ways to perhaps enter the fortress, especially to a small team or single person. It's actually a little bit more vulnerable to that than it is to an armed assault. It looks as if you brought an army, it would be a very difficult fortress to attack. But perhaps it might not be so bad for an imaginative person or few people to find a way in. So there are some, by looking at it with your eagle eyes, you can see there is some possibility. It might not be that crazy to sneak in. Question, Ola, do you relay the, what you yeah. see to the group? I, I, I see, um, I, 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 I kind of mirror everything that I see. And I, I do it in, a, in a quite a military way, right. describing, right. describing the things that I think is necessary for them to know from a like, strategic point of view. Perfect. Was there any guards? Um, yes. There are some yeah. people walking up and down the fortress walls and some other activity near the bottom. Okay. I mean, we know, or do we know? Do we know if, if is, is the mountain which do she know is she, is she not, or that we are coming? I mean, I kind of interpreted all the, the from my perspective, I've interpreted all the the entities that we have met so far to be kind of part of of the mountain which uh, like team or posse or whatever you, you call it and 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 since she is magical and all that, and I, I'm actually saying this to everyone else, do you, do you really think that she would be like surprised that we are coming? She has no. had like, no, no, I don't think so either. You may be interested to know that the mountain witch as a name and in Japanese mythology codes as male. As, as male? Yeah. The term which is not, not? The, the, the term which is not gendered in this language. And the default mm. is male. The, uh, the, Just letting us okay. Yeah. But yeah. that but Ola's question, or rather Tagachi's question, does 
stands, can anyone recall any reference that any of these creatures has made to the mountain witch, particularly in terms of a uh, leader or them having some kind of job with them? Ida nope. Sama will tell her no, she can't, but she thinks it's wise to assume that the mountain witch does know about our approach anyway. 